Holy Grail is a treasure. A treasure which serves as an important motif in the Arthurian legend. Various traditions describe the Holy Grail as a cup, dish or stone with miraculous healing powers, sometimes providing eternal youth or sustenance in infinite abundance. It's often guarded in the custody of a fisher king and located in a hidden grail castle. A grail first appears in Percival, the story of the grail, an unfinished chivalric romance by Cretan de Troy, around 1190. But this was always seen as a work of fiction, a work of fiction nevertheless that informed the Christian Celtic and possibly other origins of the Arthurian Grail. In the late 12th century, Robert de Baron in Joseph de Arimathea portrayed the Grail as Jesus' vessel from the Last Supper, which Joseph of Arimathea used to catch Christ's blood at the crucifixion. Uh, thus the Holy Grail became interwoven with the legend of the Holy Chalice, the Last Supper Cup, an idea continued in the work such as Lancelot Grail Cycle and Thomas Mallory's 15th century Le Mort de Artur. Uh, there is a Celtic myth of a mystical cauldron of Bran the Blessed, which shares some similarities to the Grail story. Uh, Bran's cauldron was said to possess the gift of restoring life and supplied a never-ending supply of food. Some versions of the legends feature magical dishes or platters that test a man's power or worthiness to rule, as only a true rud sovereign of correct lineage, i.e. brands, could possess them. From the 12th century, Glastonbury became associated with King Arthur and his resting place of Avalon. In the 13th century, a legend arose that Joseph of Arimathea was the founder of Glastonbury Abbey. Early accounts of Joseph of Glastonbury focus on the establishment of the first church in Britain. But from the 15th century, the Grail became a prominent part of the legends surrounding Glastonbury. Interest in Glastonbury researched in the late 19th century inspired by renewed interest in the Arthurian legend and spiritual movements. In the late 19th century, John Goodwin hid a glass bowl near Glastonbury. A group of his friends, including Wesley Tudor Bowl, retrieved the cup in 1906 and promoted it as the original Holy Grail. And Glastonbury and its Holy Grail legend have since been adopted by New Age and neo-pagan groups. In the early 20th century, esoteric writers identified a Montségur, a stronghold of the Cathar sect in the 13th century, as the Grail Castle. Also, the 14th century Roslyn Chapel in Midlothian, Scotland, became attached to the Grail legend in the mid-20th century. Given Shropshire's reputation for mystical and perhaps its use of the mystical for place marketing, it should come as no surprise that there's many stories of the Grail in Shropshire. Uh, Whittington Castle was the seat of the Fitzwarrens. It's claimed that at one time the Holy Grail was kept there. Following an earlier tradition, uh, not the Grail used in the Last Supper but Jesus, but the Grail used by Mary Magdalene or the Marian Chalice to collect Christ's blood after the crucifixion. Certainly there's a tradition of depicting Mary with a chalice containing blood which is linked to the sacrament. Although according to Jewish tradition, it was Joseph of Arimathea who actually collected the blood. Another version is that Mary used it to anoint Christ with oil, 
uh, whilst many vessels were claimed to have been the true grail, there was only one thought to have been the chalice used by Mary. Uh, the grail remained in Jesus' empty tomb for nearly 400 years, supposedly being found by St. Hel- Helen when she excavated Christ's tomb in the early 4th century. It was then taken to Rome by the mother of the first Christian emperor, Constantine the Great, then smuggled from Rome in AD, uh, sorry, in 410 CE, to save it from the barbarians. Uh, during the Middle Ages, it, uh, the legend persisted that it had been taken to safety in Britain, the last output of Roman civilization in Western Europe. A story of Falkley Fitzwarren is reported in the Historia Rerum Anglicarum. It appears to have been composed in the mid-13th century, probably before the death of Falk's son at the Battle of Lewis in 1265, as he is said in the author's preface to be still alive. Falkley Fitzwarren focused mainly on Falk's life. Uh, in the three years between 12, uh, 1200 and 1203, uh, when he was engaged in a guerrilla campaign against King John. Indeed, some of the elements of the story suggest that he could have influenced the legend of Robin Hood. Uh, the story opens with Falk being portrayed as descendant of the rightful heir of King Arthur, his great-grandfather, Payne per- Peveril, and thus the Grail legend. Although this is although this Arthur is Owen uh, Van Gwyn, a fifth century warrior king who defeated the Anglo Saxons when they invaded his lands after the Romans have left. There are some stories suggesting that he was actually King Arthur. In fact, uh, at the time, the name Arthur wasn't common. Having, to be, having been derived from Roman names, although it was adopted by Irish settlers in Britain. Nevertheless, the claim is that it was Arth, meaning bear in British. Falk must repossess the white land, probably the Mile of Sasneg, of the Welsh borders that were once the land of Arthur. But to accomplish this, he must first recover the Grail. Falk eventually discovers the Grail in a chapel adjoining his castle at Whittington, asking on on his deathbed for it to be placed in Alderbury, uh, Alderbury Abbey, which he had founded. Falk's castle at Whittington was once at the heart of the Kingdom of Paris, having been captured by Madog and uh, uh, Maridi, Maridith. The white town mentioned in the White Lands became Whittington, a Whittington is dominated by the moat of the castle. Could this be the real island of Avalon? Although the Roman city of Viracomian or Roxeter was the original right town, it seems that the name was applied to the new Paris castle capital once Viracomian was abandoned in 658. A Saxon taxation document from 660. Uh, contains a reference to a new capital of the reduced kingdom of Powys. It's described as being near Oswestry at the head of the Great March. This is precisely the location of Whittington in the Welsh border marshes. In the Doomsday Book, Whittington uh, was the name the Saxons had used for the town. Uh, But even if Arthur can be identified as Owen... Owen, um, than than Gwyn. The claim that that Owen was was king of Paris is not substantiated. All available medieval records make him the king of Ross in the Conway Valley and hence Gwyneth and not Paris. However, during a part of this period, Ross did change hands between Paris and Gwyneth and indeed the Earl of Lincoln. Whilst the north of Shropshire is at the traditional boundary between Gwynedd and Powys. Related to this story is another about the MP Mad Jack Mitten stealing this grail from Whittington Castle for a flower girl. In 1920 a cup was discovered inside a statue in the grotto at Hawkstone Park. 
which some have suggested that it could be the grail, despite only being the size of an egg cup. It apparently seems to be a Roman centre or ointment jar from the first century. Also, the material is green alabaster, which was popular at the time in Palestine. Is it possible that the stories connecting Hawkston Path to the Arthurian legend come from Jane Hill, a part of the family owning Hawkston, sister of Lord Hill and a staunch royalist? Hill is locating the Red Castle at Hawkston as Sir Thomas Mallory's Arthurian Red Castle and juxtaposition it with the White Castle at Whittington. Uh, This is added to by other sections of the Arthurian legend, which are supposedly located at Hawkston. Henry de Audley built the Red Castle in 1227. Uh, Rising out of the plains, one of the the crags was ideal location, location for a castle, befitting the Lord of the Marshes. Sir Rowland Hill purchased Hawkston in 1555, along with the land at nearby Sultan and Hormond. Hill was the first Protestant Lord Mayor of London, and despite a brief imprisonment in the Tower of London, he was knighted by Henry VIII. Tarquin and Tarquino were said to be giants who built and inhabited the Red Castle which lies within the slopes of the park. The legend is further enhanced by the giant's well, which is reached through an arched passageway at the foot of the cliff. Uh, Together with about 40 feet of the castle tower, and is hewn out of solid rock. The giant's brother, Sir Cardus, captured Sir Gawain. Sir Lancelot and Sir Tristram of the Round Table set out to rescue their friend, they encountered Cicardus carrying Sir Gawain, a bound and tied across his saddle. After the legendary fight, Sir, Sir Lancelot killed the giant at Kilgard, near Western Under Red Castle Church, fleeing Sir Gawain. Legend has it that King Arthur addressed his knights in the caves contained within this parkland. There is a legend that one of the caves of Hawkston Park was the burial ground of King Arthur. Through a number of iterations, it's probable that Hill's recounting of the stories, which influenced Charlotte Byrne in her retelling of this story. Certainly, even in the 18th century, tourists were flocking to Hawkstone, making it one of Britain's most popular tourist destinations. Dr Johnson visited and was impressed remarking on the awfulness of its shades and the horror of its precipices. Could this be an early example of destination marketing, a process which is all too apparent in Shropshire today? With the sale of Hawkstone Park to the Barclay Brothers, the Arthurian legend has been resurrected and forms a part of the tourist attractions of the Hawkstone Park Follies. The modern interest links the Marian Grail via Roxeter to Whittington Castle and finally to the Red Castle at Hawkston. Compelling, although somewhat fanciful, those, uh, this sequence is, uh, there is a stained glass window by Richard Evans in the nearby St. Luke's Church in Hodnet depicting a golden chalice. Unfortunately, the church was damaged by people hunting for the grade, grail, said to have been two shadowy Italians in black suits. Indeed, Shropshire antiquarian Thomas Wright is believed to have married into the Falk Fitzwoman's descendants and discovered clues to the grail's location, finding it then reared it in Hawkston Park. Uh, The stained glass window depicts Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. John is holding a chalice said to contain a snake or dragon which represents poison. Uh, This is an allegory to the legend of the poison chalice of wine given to him at the Temple of Diana which he blessed before drinking and thus suffered no harm. Uh, But the hot depiction of St John does not show a snake in the chalice, 
and the same to himself looks feminine. Is this a clue to Mary Magdalene and the Marian chalice? Apparently the window was designed and donated to the church by Thomas Wright. Further, mo- furthermore, Canon Reginald Haber, Heber, sorry, who went on to become the Bishop of Calcutta, had written about the link between Hawkstone and the Arthurian legend in the early 19th century. In recent years, these myths have been developed by author and former BBC journalist Graham Phillips. And indeed, he has a channel on this platform, should you wish to follow them up. I have to declare something of a prejudice I have towards Graham. And and I apologise to him. It's just having been brought up in rural Shropshire. And despite feeling more a part of Wales or Liverpool or Manchester, we used to have the Midlands television. And Graham has a Warwickshire, could be a Birmingham accent, uh, but he has one of those accents that I associate from a very young age with people who are untrustworthy. And I'm sorry, Graham. However learned what you're doing might be, it's your accent I can't cope with, or your accent and your mannerisms, but I don't want to put anybody else off Graham. By all means, listen to him. Now, he claims that the Grail was removed from Alderbury Priory uh, by a further descendant, a Robert Vernon. Uh, sorry, by a further descendant, and Robert Vernon recovered it in the late 16th century. Eventually, it was hidden in Orkston Park. Graham tracked down this grail being kept by the Langham family in Rugby. Descendants of the Shropshire businessman Rob Walter Langham, who claimed to have found the cup hidden in Hawkstone Park in 1920. Uh, the chalice was authenticated by the British Museum as being, in all possibility, first century Roman. A Vale Crucis Abbey uh, near Llangochlan was founded in 1201 uh, by Prince Madog ap Griffith, uh, Griffith and the white monks of the Cistercian Order. Its name, Valley of the Cross, refers to the 9th century, uh, to the nearby 9th century Pillar of Elzig. Monks at the An- uh, Abbey were responsible for writing some of the early stories of King Arthur. And now an inscription on the Pillar of Elzig, close by the Abbey, suggests that Arthur ruled Powys. Uh, Graham insists that Roxeter was the seat of the, seat of the Powys Kingdom at that time. So King Arthur is speculated to have been the king of the Voldetoni tribe from Vera Conin, or Roxeter, which became known as Camelot. And now he married Guinevere, or Gran Humara, from the Oswestry Trill- Hillfort, or Caer Orgfan. In Arthurian legends, the father of Guinevere was known as Grogavan. So, well, there's certainly a connection, isn't there? She is said to have retired to White Lady's Priory near Wolverhampton, of course, Guinevere in the legend did, not, did retire to a nunnery following her affair with Lancelot. Although Arthurian legend holds that she is buried in Glastonbury Abbey, uh, currently the Oswestry Hillfort is subject of a planning inquiry. Former MP Owen Paterson has, was asked to support those objections to the develops, but declined on grounds of principle. Maintaining North Shropshire's tradition for elected principal politicians, going back at least as far back as Mad Jack Mitten. Graham also claims that Excalibur and Arthur's body may be found in the birth bull at Bath Church. Therefore, the birth bull is supposedly the location of the Lady of the Lake. 
In the lab legend, Excalibur was thrown in the lake by Guinevere following her affair with Lancelot Lot and retirement to the White Lady's Abbey. A White Lady's being a traditional reference to water nymphs. The Birth Hill is said to be the true Avalon and not Glastonbury Tor. As Graham wrote, in the Oxford University Library there is a poem from the Dark Ages which refers to the Knights of Roxeter, who, who were buried at the churches of Bassa. And when you think about anywhere in Shropshire that sounds similar, you think of Bass Church. Uh, there is a place that matches the description just outside the village, an earthworks known as the Birth, which, <coughs> which were two islands in a lake. Obviously the lake has now gone. Phillips also suggests that the king's tomb might be located in another place, a country in the lane in a nearby village called Birch Grove, where evidence of an old chapel was found back in the 1930s. A Birch Grove is one of the four Iron Age meres in close proximity to each other near Bass Church, another being the Birth Pool. Alternatively, Arthur's body was carried there by barge along the River Severn, a passing through Grin Gringock Plain close to Welshpool. Certainly the River Grois lies between the River Severn and River Camlad, and Bass Church is not far from the River Severn. So at least this part is plausible. Uh, Graham Phillips resurrects the Welsh myth that Arthur's crown jewels are held at Wenlock Priory following Arthur having taken refuge there. Indeed, it is said to have been a traditional refuge for the treasure of British kings. Uh, whilst a magic cauldron was said to contain treasure and a special war, a sword, is said to have been cl hidden close to the summit of Caracaradoc. Although this legend is related to Caradoc himself, it would seem to suggest an alternative connection with the Caradoc, with Caradoc, Arthur was apparently saved by a lion on Wixel Moss in the Mile of Sasnag. His last battle being fought at Reva Grois, which I assume to be the Reva Grois near Welshpool and not that in Cardigan, despite the Cardigan one's connections to Merlin. Not least as this ties in with the mention of the Gringog Plain. In this legend, his last battle was in the legend. His last battle was said to be of Camlan, which has traditionally been interpreted as Cornwall of even Cumbria. Uh, but the river Camlan runs through southwest Shropshire, and indeed, Reed 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 creating a gap through the mountains of Wales, providing a route to Rochester. Of course, this is the very route that uh, Gwenville reeking up Schenkin. Up Minth Mower would have taken when creating the Reekin. Indeed, the River Camlad actually forms the border between England and Wales at this point. The stone in which Excalibur was held is said to be at Mitchell's Fold Stone Circle in South West Shropshire. William Stuckley, the 18th century antiquarian, surveyed this circle and reported that the locals claimed it was the place where Arthur drew the sword from the stone. However, the story of the sword in the stone comes from the French fiction, and cannot be found within any, within any Welsh or British myths. Uh, Graham has also speculated that Arthur was the ruler of Shropshire in the 5th century, was known as Owen, Owen Thant, uh, Gwyn. And this links the legend back to the White Castle of Whittington and indeed Roxeter. His name would have been known in any battle as the bear and in the Old English this word would have been translated as Arth. Owen's father's battle name would have been known as Terrible Head Dragon or Uth Pendrago in Welsh, remarkably similar to Uther Pendragon who was Arthur's farmer father in the Arthurian legend. When Owen Thant Gwyn died at around uh, 520 CE, 
civil war appears to have broken out between his rival heirs. His son, Cundlassus from Roxeter, and his nephew, Manclonus, the dragon from Gwynedd. At the Battle of Maresfield near Oswestry in 642 CE, the nobles, including Clinthalan, said to be the last descendants of King Arthur to reign in the Welsh marshes, uh, defeated the army of King Oswald of Northumbria. Oh, Oswald was defeated, dismembered, and his head put on a pole for a year. Uh, the Dog in the Lane pub in Astley claims to have been built around a watering hole which was patrolled by King Arthur and his men. Uh, whilst the legend of the Round Table is actually an oblique reference to Meal Roundabout, separating the commuter village of Baston Hill from Shrewsbury. Although I have to admit that this reference to the Meal Roundabout is one that I've made up myself. In uh, 2017, a cave supposedly used by the Nemps Templar had been discovered by a farmer in Shropshire behind a rabbit hole. They're known as the Canton Caves and are in Beckbury, close to Wolverhampton. However, there's nothing that links them to the Knights Templar, and they're mostly, probably, simply another folly like the Hawkstone Caves. There is also a link to Shugborough Hall in Staffordshire, which is said to have had a cryptic clue on the Shepherd's Monument as to the true nature of the Grail. Now, despite the quantity and suppo of supposed connections to King Arthur and the Grail, there are similar connections all over the UK, and many with much more convincing claims. Always they're reported as being the real Arthur or the real Grail, uh, but never is it questioned if there was a real Arthur or a real grail, as despite the quantity of evidence, there's little to truly substantiate it either. What I can say is that the story of Arthur arose out of the chaos of the Roman retreat from Britain, but is not mentioned by name for another century. The Arthurian legends are split into pre galfridian texts, written before Geoffrey of Monmouth's work, Beginning with Gildas de Exquido Britannae, translated to the ruins of Britain, written around 540, then post Galfridian texts, meaning post Godfrey, are those under the influence of Godley, Godfrey's highly embellished book. What is striking, regardless of when written, there is no continuity between the Welsh accounts. Could it be that there is more than one Arthur, or that the Welsh Arthur is also fictional? Within the pre galfridian tradition is Nanius, and scholars believe that he comes from the kingdom of Powys. Due to the English influence, the history covers all of Britain rather than just Wales, possibly providing between the Welsh link to the wider British myth. Uh, whilst the true Arthurian story begins with Creighton de Troy, represented as Zenith in Welsh, that's Welsh, in French interest, uh, and indeed novels about the Arthurian legend, with to, to Thomas Mallory's Mort d'Arthur, uh, 1469 to, to 70, pushes the temporal boundaries of this legend. Uh, what I can say is that some of these legends do appear to have some age to them. Some of these legends from Shropshire as, as well. Uh, they appear to have some importance to the marches during the Dark Ages, especially the area around Oswestry, which changed hands between the English and the Welsh many times. Even the story of Wild Edric has some resonance with the Arthurian legend. Uh, so I think we have to conclude that if anywhere has a claim to Arthur, why not in Shropshire? Mm -hmm.